It's the dream team of high school basketball, the McDonald All-Americans, the premier superstars from across America. Ralph Sampson now sparkles as one of the NBA Houston Rockets' twin towers. He is just one of the awesome alumni of the McDonald teams. It was 1979 that Sampson played in the second McDonald's game at Charlotte, North Carolina. Isaiah Thomas now runs the attack for the Detroit Pistons of the NBA in brilliant style. He flashed that same penetrating skill as a McDonald High School All-America in 79. Dominic Wilkins is closing in on an NBA scoring title with the Atlanta Hawks. And when he debuted as a national star in the Charlotte game, Wilkins introduced a new dimension into the game of basketball. Michael Jordan is the toast of Chicago Bulls fans, NBA Rookie of the Year last season. And it was 1981 in Wichita that Jordan flashed this clutch brilliance, scoring the deciding points in the McDonald's All-America game. Johnny Dawkins has just led Duke University to a great season, including a record 37 victories and an NCAA runner-up finish. In 1982, Dawkins was a graduate of the McDonald's All-America game. And now, the superstar of 1986 is one J.R. Reed. 6'10", 240 pounds from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Reed is the complete package, playing both ends of the court, and he receives the vote as the premier player of 1986. From Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. East Gentlemen, please direct your attention to the center of the basketball court. We are honored tonight to have with us two basketball stars in their own right who have helped make this McDonald's All-American game possible. Former coach of the UCLA Bruins and chairman of the McDonald's All-American Team Advisory Committee, the coach, John Wooden. Joining Coach Wooden, the coach of the Namatha High Stags from Hyattsville, Maryland, consistently one of the top-ranked teams in the nation, and chairman of the McDonald's All-American Team Selection Committee, Morgan Wooten. And now, here's the starting lineup for the ninth annual McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game. A 6'2", 190-pound guard from Rinslatton High School in Cambridge, Massachusetts, scoring 18 points a game, heading for the University of Michigan. For the East, number 10, Camille Robinson. A 6'3", 170-pound guard from Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, California, scoring 34 points a game. Heading for Syracuse University for the West team, number 32, Steve Thompson. A six foot one, 185 pound guard from Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. Scoring 22 points a game, heading for Georgetown University for the East team, number 20, Mark Tillman. A six foot four, 175 pound guard from Flint Northwestern High School in Flint, Michigan. Scoring 26 points a game, heading for the University of Iowa for the West team, number 24, Anthony Pendleton. A six foot six, 190 pound forward from DeMatha High School in Hyattsville, Maryland. Averaging 20 points a game, heading for the University of Maryland for the East team, number 44, Steve Foote. A six foot 10, 207 pound forward from Romulus High School in Romulus, Michigan. Scoring 27 points a game, and heading for the Wolverines of the University of Michigan for the West team, number 52, Harry Bill. A 
Age six foot eight, 200 pound forward from Grover Cleveland High School in Buffalo, New York, scoring 30 points a game, heading for Notre Dame University for the East. Number 50, Keith Robinson. A six foot five, 210 pound forward from Simeon Vocational High School in Chicago, Illinois, scoring 20 points a game, heading for the University of Illinois for the West team, number 44, Nick Anderson. A six foot 10, 240 pound forward from Kimpsville High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Scoring 25 points a game, heading for the University of North Carolina. For the East squad, number 34, J.R. Reed. And a 6 foot 8, 210 pound center from Detroit Northern High School in Detroit, Michigan. Scoring 23 points a game, heading for Syracuse University. For the West, number 43, Derek Coleman. They're the starting five. They'll play six minutes. A fresh new pies will come over each team, and we'll be back for the opening tip-off. This is the ninth annual McDonald's All-America High School game. The West has won five of the eight, including three out of the last four. They'll be favored here tonight. The West will be wearing the white. They'll have the Michigan connection in there. And for the East, they'll be wearing their blues. And of course, they'll be led by J.R. Reed. 240 pounds, 6'10", and on the other side, Perry Mills. There he is, Mr. Smooth from Romulus, Michigan, against J.R. Reed. How about this matchup, Dick uh, Vital? Well, Terry Mills, a great finesse player. He's more of a perimeter-oriented player versus J.R. Reed. J.R. is a power player, likes to play on the interior. In fact, a lot of people are saying the tandem of J.R. Reed and Scott Williams from out of California, as we look at J.R. walking on the floor, could be reminiscent of a great tandem at North Carolina, namely James Worthy and, and Sam per Perkins. Right on. Perkins has been compared a lot to Scott Williams from California. And the Reed, who's maybe an inch taller than uh, James Worthy, has the same kind of raw power and great talent, athletic ability. Any class to get two guys like Mr. Reed and Mr. Williams has to be number one in American recruiting. This game will be played in 12-minute quarters, and we'll fill you on the other difference in this rules as we go along. The East controls, so look out for J.R. Reed. Here's Rumel Robinson, the great penetrating point guard from Boston, and now Steve Hood from DeMatha, and they'll be looking inside to J.R. Reed. He's being heavily guarded in there by Coleman. Great star outside Keith Robinson for the East, and Hood is in there at the pump pick. So follow him, the rebound pulled off by Pendleton. Here comes the West for the first time. Jim, we'll see all man-to-man -man defenses. Can't utilize the zone, so it should bring out their great one-on-one -on -one ability. There was Mills being checked in there by Robinson, along with another great shooter, Pendleton and Coleman. That's the rebound. It's a great rebounding team, the West. And you're going to see a lot of offensive rebounds out of this white-clad team because with guys like Coleman and Mills and Williams, they can really get up, Dick. Coleman's part of a great recruiting class going out to Syracuse with Steve Thompson and Earl Duncan. Coleman from the corner and the Michigan guy over the scoring. He's a real big-time prospect. He's got range. He, I believe he's going to be an impact player as a freshman at Syracuse at that power forward slot. You just said Jimmy Bayham had a great uh, recruiting year. That, of course, he did. And with Pearl Washington perhaps coming back, that the banner year again last year for the next year for the Orange. Men. I think Pearl Washington's a goner, Jim. I think he's going in the NBA draft. Here goes J.R. Reed on the inside, tries to tap it up, pulled off by Coleman. Quick break for the West. Down comes Thompson. Steve Thompson on the break for the West, and it's 4 nothing. A tremendous transition player from out of Crenshaw High School in L.A., where they also had Marcus Johnson, another great player, years ago. And John Williams two years ago. Isn't that is he? A scoring open by Ramil Robinson for the East, and it's 4-2. to two. If Robinson develops a perimeter shot as a consistent shot, he is going to be devastating. He's a great penetrator from out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, the same high school as Patrick Ewing. Here goes Pendleton on a drive down the middle, and he's fouls. He goes down the lanes by Tillman. That'll be the first foul of the game. The players will be allowed six personal fouls each. 
That's the first one of the game against Mark Tillman from Gonzaga High School. And one thing they did at Gonzaga this year, they beat the math at three out of four. I know, they beat him three times, and that's very rare to beat a Morgan Wooten team. He's going to Georgetown, uh, Tillman, also with Dwayne Bright. So John Thompson's going to have two quick new guards coming in. Well, Bright fits right into Thompson's boat. Bills heavily guarded. Rebound tipped outside by Coleman. Reed had the position, and Coleman the quicker. Here's Coleman again. Again inside goes Thompson up uh, for a rebound for the West. Again, Thompson takes it up, and this time he's fouled underneath. Boy, can they bounce up and down those West players. Jim, they can really jump. They got the great legs, and Thompson, to me, I know many people are projecting him as a number two guard up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. I really believe he's a number three player, a small forward. He's such a tremendous athlete, and he's got that great jumping ability, electrifying during a dunking situation. 6-3 forward. A lot of people have called him that. Uh, of course, they use that ferocious zone press out of Crenshaw High School. Thompson, who averaged 34 points a game. A lot of points on steals and driving layups. Four points for Thompson. And the West is out in the lead again by four, six to two. They won the state title. He also academically, he said, make sure you remind him about my academic average, 3.7, Steve Thompson. Outside shot by Tillman. Whoa, Brick comes off the glass. Here comes the West Pendleton looking for the break. Pendleton's a big guy, but he can play the point. No doubt about that. Iowa going to love this guy from the perimeter with that new three-point rule. Down low to Mills, tries to get around Robinson, walks. You know, you mentioned Pendleton. He has the great range as a shooter, and he is an outstanding long-range shooter. Comes from Flint, Michigan, where they've really developed so many outstanding scholastic players over the last 10 years. Pendleton's going to sit down now, and Fess Irvin comes in for the first time, a 5'11", only the second player in the history of this game, under six feet, to play in this contest, the other being Michael Porter. Double dribble in the backcourt by Tillman. So Irvin comes off the bench pressing and makes it pay off. And LSU fans are going to welcome this young man. He's the true, pure point guard. He's a great lead guard. He told me, he said, my idol is? I said, who is it? He said, Isaiah Thomas. And also Dwayne Bryant. I said, who's your favorite player? He said, Isaiah Thomas. Well, if he can be close to Oh, what a great, great fake. fake by Mills. And a dish inside to Thompson. And uh, rebound is pulled down by Brooks. Mills comes to the east, but trailing 6-2. to two. Mills has great perimeter skills, a tremendous passer, and... Well, look at Tillman trying to make something. You can't do that against these caliber players driving the middle. Coleman coming down quick. Oh, oh Derek Coleman! Right over J.R. Reed, and he's fouled on the play. A little slam, jam, bam. Are they going to love that, Jim, at the Carrier Dome? 30,000 will be rocking and rolling. Derek Coleman, do it, D.C. There he goes, right down the lane, the left hand. He says... Exciting, hello there. You know, he's less publicized, Dick, uh, than Mills or Pendleton, but this guy could be a sleeper next year. Well, I'll tell Syracuse. you what, he's no Rip Van Winkle. Everybody will know about him, Jim. He's getting great reviews right now, and they're projecting him as a potential starter on their front court up at Syracuse. Nine to two, seven point lead by the West. Here comes Hood driving across the score, and he's fouled on the play by Thompson. Boy, Hood, who's made those plays for the last couple of years for Morgan Wooten up at DeMatha, and talk about a coaching dynasty. Wooten with five national championships, and this is the amazing thing about him, Dick, in all his years up there, every player's graduated has gotten a college scholarship. Amazing record, just an amazing record. He's projected so many great players. He's got another great sophomore now, 6'9", by the name of Gerard Mustaf. They say he's a superb player. Ah, uh, there's a goaltending call on Mills. Give the basket to Robinson. And so the West, or the East, the West is coming back. Keith Robinson going out to Notre Dame. Digger's had an excellent class. Digger Phelps did a tremendous job this year, bringing in a kid named Scott Paddock from out of Florida. Another kid by the name of Tony Jackson from out of Connecticut to join Keith Robinson. Nine to six, Thompson down the middle. They stop to Coleman. Coleman walks. Gave that little fake, and uh, you'll have to learn. You don't get away with that in college basketball. Jim, I talked to a lot of people, and I definitely agree with people I respect in basketball after watching these kids practice and all if there's one area they have definitely not I don't believe fundamentally solid on is shooting the perimeter shot everybody wants to be Mr. Jordan they want to play up in the air they all try to make the acrobatic shot looking for maybe on a I don't, the three-point play and trying to slam jam bam they really do not work on that stationary jump shot 
full court pressure. This will rule change for many years of this game that didn't let you press full court in the first three quarters, but now you can press anytime you like as long as it's man to man. Keith Robinson outside for the East. There goes J.R. Reed. Pump fake up to take it into score, and he's fouled on the play. And for the first time, we see the familiar form of J.R. Reed. He did a tremendous job getting positioning inside and utilizes the great pump fake. You can see he's been well coached by Dick Ponte and his skills on how to play around the basket. Watch him operating on the interior. Great hands. There's the head fake, the pump fake. Oh, they're going to love him down to Chapel Hill. I spoke at a banquet the other day, and a guy says, you know, I don't know about his lateral quickness, and this guy was trying to recruit him. I won't mention the school. I said, let me tell you something. Practice starts October 15th at 3 o'clock. At 3.01, he'll be starting for the Tar Heels. Yeah. Believe it. A good block from behind by uh, Tillman, and the rebound picked up again by the West. West leads the game at 11 to 9. If Anderson comes across, they hit that shot. He's a big, powerful player from out of Simeon High School in Chicago, heading out for Lou Henson's Illinois team, who had a tremendous recruiting year, getting Larry Smith coming in, an outstanding guard, and Kendall Gill. Here goes Brooks, headed for West Virginia off the glass, rebound ripped off by Coleman, and he cannot hold it. It'll go out of bounds to the blue-clad East team. Coached by Stu Vetter, who's had a great career at Flint Hill High School in Oakton, Virginia. And there's a great story about the coach of the West. We'll tell you about later what happened to Joe Evans when he came into Detroit this week to have some fun. You're talking about Stuart Vetter. He's got a tremendous junior. The nation's going to love him. Dennis Scott next year. Mills on the turnaround. So Mills ignites these Detroit fans here as he breaks the two-point lead and sends it on to four, 13 to 9. I was teasing Bill Frieda before the game, sitting with John Wooden, the legend, Derry John Wooden. I said, hey. You got, look at that move inside. Yep, great agile player is J.R. Reed. You know his name really is Herman Reed Jr. He doesn't like to be called Jr. He didn't want to be called Herman because of his dad, so he just took the Jr. and made it J.R. You call him anything he wants when he's 6'10 and 240. Call but, you know, the boss. Get, getting back to uh, Bill Frieda, I was teasing him. I said, Frieda, you got two kids rated in the top four in America by most people. And, Terry Mills and Ramil Robinson. I said, those two guys are in the Hall of Fame already, and they haven't shot a, shot a jump shot. He said, Dick, you're putting pressure on me. I said, no, you put it on yourself by recruiting these kind of players. Great instincts. J.R. Reed has. Makes him a certain superstar. Coming up in college basketball, 13-11. Five points for Reed. These fellows got about a minute to play before we change five. Nick Anderson the corner for the West, and the East has the rebound. Ripped off by Robinson. There's it out here to Steve Hood from the Matha. And here we go, Hood off the dribble. And J.R. Reed has it taken away by Coleman. Boy, that Coleman kid can go on the board. He's really impressive, Jim. He's a very active player. Here's a pass mishandled, picked up by Hood. Back the other way comes the East. They're trailing by two. Chance to tie it is J.R. Reed with a left oh, hand. Left hook. hand move well, inside. Not go, but was that close? He's the real thing. He's the whole truth. Coleman oh. behind his back, driving in. Little walks on the play. No basket, no foul, just a walk. Little showbiz, little showtime. He wants to show he's a PTP or a primetime performer. Take a look at him. He's 6'9". He goes between the legs. Little showboat. And now here he is. He wants to take it and slam it, but he walks. Only about three or four steps. They're coming in now with six and a half minutes to go with the new team. So we'll be back to set the new lineups for in a moment in the first quarter midway, 13-11, the West. There's the new West lineup. They'll have Brian Oliver and Rex Chapman in the backcourt. Ala Abdelnebi at 16 playing the center. Ricky Jones, Pete Chilcutt will be the forwards. And for the East, it'll be uh, Ron Hurey and Scott Williams and Dwayne Chitzis in the front line with Dwayne Bright and Phil Henderson in the backcourt. So those are the new lineups to play the second half of this first quarter. There'll be four 12-minute quarters, six and a half minutes to go here. They changed a little bit early. They usually go down to six minutes. Brian Oliver picked up by Henderson. A couple of players headed for the ACC. A reach-in foul by Henderson, who's been likened by many to the graduating Johnny Dawkins. He doesn't like the comparison well, he doesn't like that much, it. but he can play. He doesn't like that comparison at all, but I'll tell you what, he's going to be tough to put on a bench. I was really impressed with him at the workouts yesterday. Good range as a shooter. He came from out of Illinois, the same high school that produced Weldon Williams, who played on Mike Krzyzewski's team. He choked a pass inside Abdel Nabe, blocked in by Scott Williams. Williams gets the pass, headed down here for the West. Oh, Under nice the pass. Missed the duck, but it gets it back in. 
Shintz is scoring. Shintz is an exciting kind of guy with his size, a good outlet passer, and he should be a great addition to Norm Sloan's Florida team. Well, he's what the Gators need. They need the big guy, the aircraft carrier on the inside, and he just committed a foul here, I believe, on a push away by Shintz. He's going to be the Gator dissuader. He's going to uh, dissuade he anybody coming that. in that lane. Well, he can run the floor for a seven-footer. Let's watch it here. Here's the action. There he is running it. So look at him. He's got to put a little weight on, running the court. Slams it, gets a bounce his way. Back to the live action now. Henderson on the outside. Rebound Pete Chilcutt taken away by Scott Williams. Couple of North Carolina bound players. And uh, rebound won by Abdelnebi. Up to Ricky Jones. Oh, down to pass. Chapman for the layup. Boy. Chapman can really run the court. He's got the great legs. His dad, Wayne, is the coach of Kentucky Wesleyan and has been an applicant for the Western Kentucky job. Thrown away while his dad played at Western Kentucky after failing to make it stick at the UK. But Chapman, who comes from the same hometown as Cliff Hagen, is going to wear the blue for any Sutton. I think that resume would have looked a lot better for his dad if he put, I had a son by the name of Rex and he was available. Shensis with a block. So that's two blocks here by the West team since this line of change. Here he, under to Williams for the left. Shensis from the follow can't get it home. Second time he does. Why Shensis has come in here and scored four quick points for the West team and it's 17-13 West. He played at Brandon High School in Florida for Frank Vining and they had the Great scorer last year by the name of Tony Mack, who went to U Durham and is playing at Georgia. That must have been a heck of a tandem with Tony Mack and Shinsis. Actually, Shinsis was more or less in the shadow of Mack, I think, last year, Dick, and you'll agree with that, but he's come into his own this year. Abdul Nebi with the hook shot put up and in by Chilcutt. Pete Chilcutt on the follow. You won't see that after they go to college because one plays for the Tar Heels, the other one for Duke. Chilcutt's really a complimentary player, but a solid player who's not. What a pass. <laughs> Outside, Joe Cup clears the rebound out to Chapman here at midcourt. This guy is multi-talented here, Rex Chapman. Oh, he's got range. He's got that shooter. range. Yes, you gotta believe that. Have He'll it. make the three-pointers, Dick. Oh, is he gonna be a three-point downtown shooter? 19 feet and nine inches, which I really believe is 21 feet. I don't know how they calculated. They started from the middle of the basket as opposed from the backboard. Here we go with uh, Scott Williams tied up by Chilcutt. So a couple of former teammates or future teammates are going to be uh, battling here what on a, the alternation. We'll go outside to the west. What a great addition getting Chilcutt and Scott Williams and J.R. Reed. Great size. And most of all, they're getting two good quick athletes, which North Carolina needed. Uh, here comes Chapman. Oliver on his left. Chapman will take it all the way. Chapman doesn't need much daylight. It's going to be tough to keep him on a bench up at Kentucky. And I think Kentucky's going to be a lot better than people believe with Bennett coming back, Davender, Blackman, and I look for Jenkins to really be the key to that team. Well, Chilcutt's made some big defensive plays since he come in. You see that one. Bryant, though, picks up the loose ball and drills it home. Dwayne Bryant headed for Georgetown out of New Orleans, De La Salle High. He's a class kid as well. Great attitude. John Thompson's got a winner. He's got a W off over his chest. I got a chance to spend a lot of time with him yesterday. Very impressive. Here comes Oliver on the run. Brian Oliver, who will be wearing the gold and blue for Georgia Tech, a premier player, and he'll probably come in behind Dalrymple down there as the number two guard, and Christian can make it a point. Well, Michael Christian, everybody says that he might be the best in the nation and didn't play this year because of a leg there injury. I, I don't know whether Shintz has tipped that in or whether here his shot just got back in there. Given a census, 21-21 tie, and substitution. Each of these five units, units of five players, has a sixth man. Now in for the West is Mark Randall out of Colorado, and in is Barry Beckadam from uh, Philadelphia, and also Larry Rimbert, who's going to be playing for Gene Bartow down at UAB, and he'll take over uh, Mincy's old spot down there, power forward. They have a lot of players coming in down UAB. They got a kid by the name of Alan Og, a 7-1 player who a lot of people believe has a lot of potential. And Rembert, they say, is a dynamite power player. I have not seen him yet, Jim. Oh, what a pass in by Chapman to Abdelnebi. And he's fouled on the play by Williams. Boy, Chapman really drilled that pass, didn't he? Yeah, he has great vision. Abdel Nebi has really good finesse skills, and he'll make a real challenge for Mark Allery's position at Duke. He's got a lot of skills. He runs the court real well, a good offensive player. He's got to get, I understand from talking to people, a little bit tougher on the court. Well, learn to play defense, which he'll do under Mike Krzyzewski. He was born in Egypt, came here when he's two and a half years old. He has a young brother and young sister. In each case, the mother went back to Egypt 
under family custom, so the children could be born there. He was the heaviest recruited Egyptian since Cleopatra. <laughs> I worked all day on uh, that one, Jim. I was waiting for you, Dick. <laughs> Retired his number up there, 33, which is the same number Kelly Trapuca had. That was a great number. Beckenham takes it inside and sends his foul. Yeah, Kelly Trapuca played at Bloomfield High School, and as you said, they retired their jerseys, and that's a good area in North Jersey for good, good athletes. Here's a young man who's had a tough time the last few weeks. He had mononucleosis, lost some weight, then he bit his tongue and became infected. He could not eat solid food. He lost 25 pounds. A Canadian who's played only two years, but Dick, he has got some super shooting skills. Jim, in relationship, as he, he threw up a brick right there, but we know he's a good shooter. We watched him in practice. In relationship to the other players here, for only playing two years, it's amazing what he's achieved. Wow, that's uh, lost out that time by Abdul Nebi. He's going with Roly Massimino at Villanova, and they had a tremendous recruiting class, getting Eric Leslie from out of New York City, getting Tom Grice 7-2 to play in a post. And a kid by the name of Taylor from out of South Carolina. So Massimino had a tremendous year recruiting. Here's Sherry. Oh, he had Randall wide open. Sherry could have taken a little bit off that pass with an easy basket because Randall had taken the inside position. That's Ron, great uh, vision on the floor by Fury. Ron Urey was the most valuable player last week in the uh, McDonald's All-American game in Washington, D.C. Ricky Jones feeding to Abdel Nebi for a hook and tipped up once and then slammed out of bounds by Shenses for the West. So the East Stars, who lead this game 22 to 21, will have the ball. You know, I don't pay too much attention to who wins these games, so they get down the fourth quarter and the kids really put it out. This is more of a showcase here, I think, for Pride Dick and kind of a preview of what's coming up across uh, college basketball. Oh, you gotta like this guy. Chapman, yep. Oh, Randall makes a nice uh, move out there. Randall had a great game last week also. 13 points, 11 rebounds as Henderson drills the jumper from the baseline. First basket by Phil Henderson headed for Duke. A pure shooter he is from Crete, Illinois. He'll battle Quinn Snyder for that job as well as Strickland. Strickland uh, could be a factor at Duke with the three-point play. He's got great range as a shooter. Outstanding shooter. Here comes Hurey now. He's a uh, very active. He wants it back. Yep, oh, he wants get it, it back. Blocked out by Abdul Nebi. I like Abdul Nebi. He's got great quickness. He's got the size. There's a look at Allah. I think he's got more athletic ability than I expected for that size. There's the kick out right now. Watch him right now. Here comes Allah right up. Boom. Great timing. Put up by Scott Williams. And look at the battle underneath. I think that went over Beckham out of bounds. It'll go to the white clad West team. The West is coached by Joe Evans. It was supposed to be coached by Grover Kirkland, but because of a rule here in the Michigan, Kirkland was not allowed to coach him. So Evans, who coached Rimbert in high school down in Alabama, came here to have a good time, and they just named him the head coach. Well, I'll tell you, that's a great time getting the kind of talent he got. Boy, Scott Williams really went in there on a fearless drive. He, he, talk about a kid give up his body. He really drove hard and drew the foul. He's from out of Hacienda Heights in California. He's got great range as a shooter. He can really stick that 17-foot jump shot, Jim. I was watching him in practice. Very impressive. In fact, I was teasing Walter Hazard one day. In fact, it came out in the paper. Walter said, my goal and priority this year was to keep Dick Vitale quiet on ESPN about Pac-10 mediocrity. Well, Jim, I said, heck, I can't run, jump, or shoot. I have no talent. His priority should have been to keep this guy on the coast because this guy can flat out play. Well, Walt had a good recruiting year, though. Yes, he did, getting Trevor Foster. Wilson and Foster and a kid by the name of Kevin Walker. And UCLA's got great perimeter people. Reggie Miller's a... Three point oh, player. Great catch by Abdul Nebi, and he has it knocked away and out of bounds by Scott Williams. It's not a great year for seniors coming out, or for centers rather, coming out of, other than J.R. Reed, perhaps because Mills likes to play forward, so does Reed. A lot of good athletes. The same next year, a lot of good six, seven kids coming out of high school. Jump hook by Abdul Nebi. Chilka taps it in. Always in the right place. One of those kids that doesn't excite you with spectacular talent but he'll get some minutes down in North Carolina because, again, he's an excellent role player. Complimentary player. He'll blend right in with Dean Smith's system. And try to hit underneath the Williams. Knocked away by Rimbert, who's an extremely active player. They're going to love him at UAB in the Sun Belt Conference, which is developed in one of the very strong leagues in the country, I think, Dick, under Dick oh, Bubis. Dick Bubis does a tremendous job with great leadership. Uh, 
In fact, I believe when you talk about Bubis and Dave Gavitt, you're talking two real giants in the game of basketball. Here comes Randall across. Right hand. Oh, oh, they oh. say he may be the second coming of Larry Bird. That's what they say in Colorado. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's saying a lot, ooh. but that's a pretty good move, Dick. That was a great move. He's going to really be exciting with Danny Manning, and Larry Brown's going to have himself quite a team again next year. Here comes Henderson. Got Randall out in front. Hurry now. Takes the loud pass. Hurry tries to go under. Shits us with an easy one. Taps it once, twice, and home. Wayne Schitz is the aircraft carrier that Norm Sloan has been wanting. He's going to be really a factor with the M&M boys, Moten and Maxwell in the backcourt. What did he say about the final four? He said, hey, I'm going to do what Purvis Ellison did. I'm taking the Gators to the national championship. There goes Chapman off the dribble. Henderson's got a man down here. Fury, Fury against Chapman. Both can leap. And there's the end of the first quarter before the shot was away. The end of the first period in Detroit. America, 28-24, West. You're watching the best in the McDonald's All-America game of 1986. But how some of the past, how about these fellows? Magic Johnson, 1977. And some other guards who've become famous. Isaiah Thomas, 79. Michael Jordan, 81. Chris Mullen from St. John's. The Pearl. And, of course, Johnny Dawkins has just wound up a brilliant career as Duke's all-time leading scorer. What a collection of guards. Pretty fair players. I'd like to be their agent, get 10% of their action, I'll tell you that. Here we go now. The original fives are back in there. Riding hard, Bess Urban, now the point guard for the West, and from the corner, cannot get it down, Nick Anderson. Romeo Robinson, 301, left side to Brooks, and he missed the slam dunk, but he is fouled underneath by Nick Anderson. Boy, he can get hurt on a play like that. You don't see much of a five-on-five -five game because these kids haven't had the opportunity and the coaches the opportunity to really drill them and develop a good half-court game, but you see excellent transition basketball. There's the good pass, he takes it up strong, it's a little tough luck on the slam jam. He's going out to West Virginia, playing for Gail Catlett, and he's the kind of athlete that the Atlantic 10 needs. Dick, I believe he's the strongest 6'6 quick forward in America. He has to really improve those shooting. His range is very limited. He is not a good perimeter shooter. Now, that's one of his long shots right there, as you see. His, the next shot he hits from 12 feet will be his first one. I love this kid right here. I think Fess Irvin's going to be an exciting player with LSU. If they get Nikita Wilson back and keep John Williams, Dale Brown, the preacher man, is going to have some kind of club. Mills on the connection. Headed for Michigan, and Bill Frieder couldn't escape a little grin on that one. Oh, he's a superb player. Mills has got great perimeter skills, and joining Glenn Rice next year with Gary Grant and the Judge Jubair, they'll be very tough. Oh, look at J.R. Reed invent something, would you? He says, hey, Terry Mills, you stick that jumper, but try to match this acrobatic act along the baseline. J.R. Reed, who led the Chiefs to 29 victories this year at Virginia Beach at Kempsville High School. Now Pendleton, great pure shooter. Overplay by Reed. Coleman gets free. Derek Coleman, is he a good one, Jim? Very impressive. I see Billy Packer smiling. Billy was talking about him today. Billy here at the game really likes Derek Coleman. I think he could be the sleeper of this class. Robinson just keeps battling the boards in there. Hey, Digger can Keith use Robinson some scores. Well, Digger can use some front court help. They lose Kempton, they lose Barlow, and Dolan. Robinson will have a chance to play. Also lose Dolan. Not partially blocked by Pendleton that time. They were quick release. Here comes Brooks to Robinson for the layup. Blew the raise one, but Reed won't. J.R. Reed's ninth point of the first half, and it's 32-31 favor of the West. He's an impressive athlete. He's got the great hands, and he's got some quickness. If there was one negative factor of North Carolina this year, I thought they didn't have great quickness across their front line. Here goes Mills. He had his man on his hip. Seven rebounds so far for Derek Coleman. We just talked about him. I think he could be the Purvis Ellison coming out of this class. That is to be the great surprise next year. Purvis Ellison, certainly last year, he had everybody chasing him in the lobby of the hotels because he had not been committed at this time. And Georgia Tech was really making a run, but Denny Crum got him, and Crum again did a superb job this year with that Louisville team because he's not afraid to lose in December. Uh, look at J.R. Reed gets the ball away from Pest to Urban, breaks up the break. Urban takes it in, slammed down by Rubio Robinson. But he gets the blocking foul anyway. Boy, you know, these guys are athletes, are they not? I was teasing Jimmy Valvano on the top of the show because Valvano wanted Fess Irvin very badly, especially with Shackelford and Chris Washburn. 
There's Irvin hanging in the air. And there was some rumors that he was beginning to waver on his decision. He gave a verbal decision to LSU. But he told me yesterday, he says, Coach, he said, I'm signing the papers when I go home Monday. So all those guys out there still chasing Mr. Irvin, save your dollars. He will be playing for Dale Brown. Well, you love this guy for another reason, that his academic average is 3.5, Dick, and uh, well, that's going to be more and more important. One of the criteria in selecting these kids for the McDonald's All-American game is their academics as well. There are a lot of other kids, Jim, across America, athletically, who might be as talented as some of the people that are here. Well, it's Morgan Woods, chairman of that selection committee, but a couple of guys named Bob Gibbons of All-Star Sports and Howard Garfinkel of Five Star did a great job, too, in contributing to that. Well, Howard Garfinkel had many of these kids at the Five Star camp, and uh, many of these kids got an opportunity to compete against the nation's best. They went to many of the camps. They went to all the, uh, the blue-chip camps in America. Steve Thompson now has checked in for the West, replacing Mick Anderson. Anderson has not gotten on track. Very active player. That is going to be a blocking foul as Fess Irvin got in there a little bit too late. Boy, these have so much quickness, these young fellows. you got to be careful. You mentioned Nick Anderson. He was very impressive, I heard, at the Dapper Dan run by Sonny Vaccaro in Pittsburgh, they said last week. He was really an outstanding player in that classic. Well, he came out of the same high school, of course, where tragically Ben Wilson had played before he was shot and killed in Chicago. There's the jump hook by Reed. That's his, one of his favorite shots. Brooks underneath. And he's fouled on the play after the rebound. Foul will be against Mills. Remember, you got six personal fouls in this game. That's only the first against Mills. Let's take another look at this battle under the boards here. Watch Coleman right now battling with Robinson on the fake. Good penetrator. Robinson takes it right into the hole. And it's an offensive foul on Robinson. George Solomon nails him. We got the Big Ten crew here and Tom Rucker, George Solomon, and Paul Graham. And they catch Robinson going to the bed. What a strong player. Look at that body. Hey, Bo Schembechler might come after him and say, let me let this guy play linebacker. Well, you took Jokic, you remember, off the basketball team. Yeah, well, Peter doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> Here's Pendleton on the move. And underneath, rebound. Robinson tips her outside. Now the release pass down to Steve Hood. Tries to just get it inside. J.R. Reed can't hold it. Pendleton coming back for the West. And Mills. Mills will take it in. Oh, oh, Robinson. Oh, Rumiel Robinson. He took it from his future teammate. He says, Terry, I want you to slam jam it next year, but not on me now. Same high school produced Patrick Ewing. Produced Rumiel Robinson this year. What a point guard. There goes Terry Mills. Romulus High School Super. He says, where's the ball? The ball is gone. A little magical act. I thought he walked, Dick. Mills comes around, feeds inside to Coleman, up over J.R. Reed, ripped off by Robinson. Boy, they, he's beginning to hold its own on the board right now, though they're trailing by three. Mills has got great vision on the court. His uncle is John Long, who I coach. Look at that good inside power move, the great head fake. I coach John Long with the University of Detroit and the Detroit Pistons, and that's his nephew out there. And he told me when he was in about the eighth grade, he says, Coach, where do you see my nephew? And this year, he broke Long's record with 50 points against Ypsilanti. Yeah, so John had Keeping 49. it in the family, right? Yeah. 34-33, one-point lead for the West. He's got a chance now to get back the lead. These teams will play for position here for three quarters. In the fourth quarter, under the rules, there are no substitution restrictions. The coaches could play whoever they want. Back in is Barry Beckerdam. Headed for Villanova. And we get a break here with 8.27 to go in the first half. One point lead for the West, 34-33. As we watch this 1986 McDonald's All-American game, let's look back at some of the great forwards from the past. How about James Worthy? Led North Carolina to a national championship. He was McDonald's All-American 79. Then Mark Aguirre, now with Dallas and DePaul. Atlanta's Dominic Wilkins. In Oklahoma's Wayne Tisdale playing at Indiana, plus Kenny Walker almost led Kentucky to the Final Four, and the great Danny Manning still going strong at Kansas. And Danny Manning certainly a great candidate for a 1988 Olympic team, and Larry Brown's going to really build around him because he's got some tremendous recruits coming in also to join Mr. Manning. A little backcourt pressure here now by the West team. They're leading by eight, 41-33. Remember last year's game, 
one team led by over 20. Next team comes back. They take a 20-point lead. That becomes a transition game. If you don't rotate back defensively, you get a lot of layups. Boy, J.R. Reed with a great head fake now with 13 points. The thing I love about J.R. Reed, he doesn't try to make the spectacular play, Jim. He's fundamentally solid, and he doesn't take a bad shot. There's Coleman the inside. Rebound taken off by Brooks. Outlet pass to Rumiel Robinson broken up. Almost taken away by Pendleton. Watch Ramil handle the ball. Very heady player. That's a walk. Reed and he walks. Boy, Reed really goes strong in the body. The thing I like about Reed, though, is he has no fear as he goes to that basket. And he's got great attitude. He comes from a class family. I spoke at the Norfolk Sports Club last year, and he was at the banquet. And I can tell you something, Jim. I met his dad. His dad's a junior high coach and teacher. His mom's a school teacher. And they've got it in proper perspective. His books are very important to him. Here's Mills going to the inside. Has it knocked away and out of bounds? He got away with a possible charge there. Best Urban now is going down the side, and there's the six-minute mark here. We'll change lineups again. You watch this play one more time. They enter it inside. There's the little bump. Mr. Romulus himself, Romulus Michigan, his coach, Al Wilkerson, has so many adjectives to describe Terry Mills. Midway now in the second quarter, so that means back for the West will come Ron Heary, Scott Williams, Dwayne Schensis, Dwayne Bryan, and Phil Henderson. And for the East, Ricky Jones, Pete Chilcutt, Ala abdel -Nebi. Brian Oliver and Rex Chapman will be the guards. Oliver's another outstanding student. Bobby Kremens has got a good one. Great attitude again and just a class act and has made himself a player by working early in the morning before school started under the supervision of his mother and his father. Tried to give a give and go there and come right back to the man who passed inbounds but uh, didn't work. Of course, Georgia Tech also signed 6'11", James Munlin. So yeah, Munlin can be a lot like John Sally, you know, who was not a heavily recruited young guy. Munlin has, you know, the great size. You can't teach 6'11". Here's Rembert inside for the East team, and Chilcutt battles down in there, and it's finally kicked out of bounds. It'll go to the West. West leads 41-35. Got to look while ago at the leading scores. There's the game score. The West had won three in a row until it was broken by the East last year, thanks to Walker Lambiel's great shooting. Scott Williams jump hook. We've been tipped outside for to Oliver for the East. Scott's having a tough time scoring inside, but he's a very active player and a very talented player. Good drive by Rembert, and they're going to walk. And now we get a jump ball called here by Tom Rucker. Rucker's going to overrule it. Well, it so that means the possession still will go to the West team, but uh, does change the arrow around. That's the one difference. Depends on which was called first, and obviously the jump ball was called first. There he is, takes the ball on a baseline, goes up strong. Rembert's a real power player, and they got a jump ball. Good call by Tom Rucker. Randall feeds inside. Chances can't hold it. Ricky Jones. Lob pass comes outside. Picked up by Scott Williams for the West. Ricky Jones has been quiet, and so has Anthony Pendleton, a really talented player. Chances on the hook. Tipped out. Abdul Nebi comes to Rimbert, and the East now is going to try to set it up. Transition's not paying off. Oliver from the side. Tipped up once and won't go by Ricky Jones. Scott Williams down. Open. Oh, yeah. 6'10", runs the floor, good floor quickness, and a good, good athlete. May have been the best year in California since uh, maybe 75, Dick, when uh, Greenwood, Lame Beer, and Theus, all those guys came out of the state. They had a great year out there this year for California. They got some great players next year also. Sean Higgins, a really talented player in the junior class. Joe cut down the middle, blocked out by Senses. Well, he shows a lot of blocking ability. Randall against Jones. Randall oh, I like Randall. Out. Randall's from out of Englewood, Colorado. He lives right near my sister, Terry, and he goes to Cherry Creek High School, where my nephew goes, and he's a legend here. They were 24-0, coached by Matt Calvin, and then they were beaten in the state right. title by George Washington, who also was 24-0 at the time of the game. Abdul Nabi on the outside. Rebound. Oliver follows inside, and now Shinsis can't hold it. Yeah. It will go out of bounds to the west. Shinsis has got to work a lot on the body weight develop a lot more stamina, but he is going to be a major factor. During a break, Billy Packer sitting to my right says he is going to be tough down in Florida. And you know, I don't always agree with Packer, but I agree with him on that. 45-35, Williams on the inside, and we got a jump ball call first. You don't do bad agreeing with Packer, though, tell. He's my old running mate. Well, we had a great time today. He paid for lunch, and you know, you don't you know him. He doesn't spring too often going ah, to that pocket. Now, Garfinkel doesn't spring that's, either, and he joined us, Howard Garfinkel. 45-35, 10-point lead for the West. 
this East team has done pretty well, but back now comes Brian. Lost the handle, which will be picked up by Ron Hury. And they sent this little jam. Oh, is he an active player? I'll tell you what, I'd get him in a weight room and I'd work on that big stud, Norman Sloan. You got yourself a dandy one down here. Now, what was that prediction again by Shentis? Oh, he said they're going to win the national championship. He said, I'm taking them right to the promised land right away. Now, to when Sloan hears that, he's going to have something to say to Shentis. <laughs> Jones on the outside. You know, it's amazing. Out of bounds to the West. Shintzis finished fifth in a ballot for Mr. Basketball in Florida. The guy that won it, a junior, Chris Corciani, an outstanding point guard from out of Hialeah Lakes High School in Miami, whose dad coaches the team. And Corciani, everybody's going to be recruiting him, a tremendous point guard. Well, he's got a brother who's a fine player down at the University of New Orleans for Benny Dees. Hey, Jim, I can't Gabe. top you. You know everything. I tell you, I got to work with a play-by-play -play guy that makes me look good. Everything I say, you got one to top me. You're, you're the most, I'll tell you, knowledgeable guy that I've ever seen sitting here in terms of knowledge of where these players are from. Uh, you're putting no. me on, Dick, but from you, that's a great compliment. Here comes Henderson. Some spinning in on the foul. Did he look like Dawkins or didn't he? Well, he doesn't want to hear that. He said, please don't say I look like Johnny Dawkins. There's only one Johnny Dawkins. 49-35 on well, the West, building a big lead here in the second quarter. Oliver penetrating. Abdul Nebi inside right hand, followed up inside by I oh, Oliver, Brian Oliver. Oliver's a strong player. He's going to be a good big guard prospect, and he'll have a year to learn playing, as you said earlier, behind Bruce Dalrymple. There goes Brian underneath, tries to reverse the layup, won't work. Abdul Levy. Brian's going to have a chance. That brings it down, doesn't he, for a fellow who's almost 6'10. 6'9. Brian's, Brian's going to have a real chance to play. Chill cut. Good shoot. Yeah, like he said, he never tries to do anything he can't do. Is he a solid player? He hasn't made a mistake yet on a floor, Jim. He does everything the proper way and doesn't really, like I say, excite you with spectacular ability. And just the other end, and he's pulled off by his Duke teammate to be Aldo Levy. And Aldo Levy just out of control. Yeah, that's the tendency in all-star games like this. He figured, let me handle the rock and go coast to coast because in these games, usually the guards dominate. Once the big guy gets it off the glass and kicks it out, they usually never see it back. Well, his whole family is here. His mother and his dad, his little sister is going to be quite a player, and his kid brother. Well, they're proud, and they have every right to be. He's also interested in majoring, majoring in electronic, I believe, engineering. Yep. Now they used to pick up some more. Larry Rembert, powerful player. Rembert with two. <laughs> Look at that hang time by Rembert. And take a bow, Gene Bartow. That's a fine recruit job you did on that fellow. First basket by Rembert. 49-41 West Bank. Did I say Eight. electrical engineering or electronic? I meant electrical engineering, I believe, is what he wants to major in. Whatever it is, it sounds very hard to me, Dick. <laughs> An overplay down here by Rembert, and he takes it away. Nice defensive play. Then Reese stole it away from Abdelnebi, and Williams picks it up, and Abdelnebi reaches back. Jim, in an all-star game, people have to anticipate and expect that the play really gets a little ragged and sloppy. You don't have the true team concept, but you really watch a game of this caliber for the individual talents and skills of each athlete on the floor. Dick, another thing this game does is raise a lot of funds for worthy causes. This year, these funds will go to the United Negro College Fund. And over the past eight uh, games, they've raised over $400,000. So McDonald's is to be congratulated. They do a tremendous job in publicizing and having John Wooden really involved. The legend John Wooden, and certainly one of the all-time superstars in coaching of any sport, whether it be basketball, baseball, football. Don't mention, don't forget Bob Gagan, who's done such a great job out of Washington, really came up with the idea for this game. Yeah, Bob has a lot of pressure on him, and he has to handle all the little things that go on in putting a contest of this caliber on. Look at that Ray range. Pointer by Chapman. Got a little air on that one. Henderson broken up by Oliver almost, and we get a wall. Good, call Good defensive it. play by Brian Oliver. Yeah, Oliver stepped in and took away his driving lane. And Henderson going around the back, took the extra step. You know, you mentioned Anthony Pendleton before, and I'm really a, I'm really upset about this. This kid signed to go to Iowa to play with George Raveling. Raveling goes out to Southern Cal, and the way the rules are set up now, this kid gets heavily penalized. And I really believe, as I've said so many times in ESPN, when there's a coaching change, the kid should have the option to be re-recruited again or decide to stay at that school. So many kids have been hurt with the coaching chaos that's been going on. Back at them from the corner. 
Dick, I think you've got a good point, but I think there's another side to that. If a coach gets fired, then I say let the kid go with him. But if he leaves on his own, don't forget the school had a lot to do with recruiting him. They used the school's reputation. They used the school's funds. So the two sides. Well, I don't know. I could disagree with you, Jim. I really can wholeheartedly. I think a kid, he decides 90% of the time to go to a school based on that love for that coach. And maybe to put the rule in that he can't go with the coach to that given school where that coach moves on to a job so that coach can't package that kid. But I say he should be re-recruited again and have a chance because so many times, Jim, if you don't fit the style of that new coach, you end up sitting on a hardwood. Maybe you should give him an option. That'd be good enough, wouldn't it? Here goes Randall inside. Follows again, does uh, Randall, and doesn't catch it. And there is the end of the first half of the score. The West, 52, and the East, 43. The West has led most of the way. They're up by nine at the half, 52-43. Like a lot of all-star games, not too smooth because they haven't had that long to work with each other, but it's hard to gauge the talent because everybody's so good. Dick, what, what were your thoughts? Well, you know, first of all, you're going to have, as you said, Jim, some ragged play because of the basic lack of a team concept. They haven't practiced that often together, and you're putting together so many superstars with great individual skills. But I don't think we've been disappointed by looking at certain skills of a J.R. Reed and a Terry Mills on the court. They've been very impressive. Certainly you haven't been disappointed by Reed. Well, Reed's a great power player inside. The thing that really impresses me about Reed is the fact that he knows how to get great position inside. Look at him working right here, number 34. Very active player. Really knows how to establish position and gets the great shot inside. There he is working, and I love that head fake. Oh, they're going to love him in that Chapel Hill gymnasium down here. What's it called? The Dean Dome? Well, that's what some call it, the Dean Smith the uh, the great new arena at Chapel Hill. A couple of players I thought they weren't that celebrated, they weren't that publicized. Pete Chilcutt and Randall, I thought they looked pretty good. Well, Chilcutt again going to North Carolina, an excellent complimentary player, a guy that comes in and does a solid job, doesn't take a bad shot, and Randall's going to be exciting. I mean, when you put Randall on a floor with a Danny Manning up in Jayhawk country, Larry Brown's got himself a good one. All right, Dick. Thank you very much. You know, one of the most exciting parts of this McDonald's All-America game weekend is the slam dunk contest. And one of the spectacular efforts turned in by Rex Chapman from Owensboro, Kentucky. Look at that flip behind the back. All tens. Listen to that Garpickle, Bob Gibbons, and Sonny Hill. Perfect. But unfortunately, Dickie missed his first. Unbelievable. He flips it around his back. A reverse Oliver. slam that's scintillating, sizzling, and they're going to love him in Kentucky. Well, that miss took him out of it, and here's Chris Brooks, the favorite, and look at that over the head. And this is going to be a perfect 10, 10, 10 57 10, out of a possible 30. 60 points. Total Vicious velocity Brooks, to that slam dunk, Jim, just amazes me. I'm sitting here watching the great agility. Look at him right now. Gail Catlett's right getting out of his seat. He can't believe it. Look at this reverse slam. What velocity, a vicious dunk. All right, and so Chris Brooks, winner of the slam dunk, and can the East with J.R. Reed overcome the West. We'll be back for the second half. There's the halftime score again. The West will have a nine-point edge. We're headed in the second half. The third quarter again will use the starting lineups, the six-minute rotation of the units. But the fourth quarter, the two coaches, Stu Vetter and Joe Evans, can use whomever they wish. And so if they got a close uh, score going in the fourth period, it'll be exciting. Leading scores the game, J.R. Reed, 13 points for the East team. He tops for the game. There were two other players, three other players with six points apiece. And for the West, the leading team, Derry Coleman, kind of an unsung hero. There's Reed, led the East. West, Coleman had nine points. And Dwayne Schentzes in the second unit had ten. So those are the two leading scores for the West team up by nine. Also, Coleman had nine rebounds, did a great job attacking the glass. And on the other side, you look at the East, Jim, the kid Keith Robinson had seven rebounds heading for the Fighting Irish out of Notre Dame. And I believe Notre Dame's going to be a top 15 team in America this year with David Rivers, who one of the most exciting little guards in the nation. All right, the West uh, will start here with uh, Randall and the lineup. So they're going to use the sixth man starting with the unit. The point guard is Wayne Bryant. So Joe Evans is starting with his number two team. They tried the alley-oop. Chilcutt picked that off. Intercepted by Bryant. 
and the ball cannot be held by Henderson. The reason Chilcutt picked that off, he had great team defensive position. He was able to see the ball in his man at both times, and he tried to throw the lob over the top, but he really did a great job with his defensive position. Chilcutt whips out uh, each team, uh, each coach, uh, Dick, starting with what it would be in second unit, not its opening five. Chilcutt, good off hits rebound. Chapman, look out. Rebound. Taken off here by Bryant, and the lead pass to Henderson on the fast break, and he walks. It'll be a turnover to the West team, or to the East team. The West leads 52-43. So it'll be J.R. Reed's unit coming in after six minutes for the East and for the West. Terry Mills and Derek Coleman in that group with Anthony Pendleton and Steve Thompson in the backcourt will be moving in. But right now, it's Harry Williams, Shenzis Bryant, and Randall. Jump shot by Chilcutt. Is Chilcutt a good-looking player? I'll tell you what. There's another example. Pops up to the open area of the floor, squares his body, and delivers the J. Oh, great pass. The inside by Henderson, and it's picked off by Rimbert. Fast break here for the East team. Rimbert's not a great <laughs> ball handler. Being challenged out here by Bryant. Rimbert, Rimbert needs some help with that ball, that's for sure. He's got to give the rock up and go down inside and post up that big, strong Arnold Schwarzenegger body of his instead of trying to be like a Magic Johnson. You know, watching that slam jam contest, had a great jam by Mr. Chapman. But you know what? Nobody can jam him like Dominique Wilkins when he was a youngster and what he's doing now with the Atlanta Hawks. Here's Chilcutt gets away from a defensive man. Put up by Rimbert on. He makes a great powerful ball. Well, that's where he belongs, Jim. He was outside trying to handle it. He goes inside, brute force, just strong inside. And his coach loves it. Joe Evans says it, just like he did at Keith High School. That'll be a walk by Randall for the West team. He gets a chance to cut in this lead a little more. 52-47. Keep an eye on this margin here because the fourth quarter will have the fireworks. That's when the coach can let go. With their top man, there's no alternation required. You have to play the units six minutes apiece here in the third period. You see a lot of isolations, a lot of one-on-one -on -one play in all-star confrontations. Right now, see the deep. Oh, Rembert in strong on Chentis draws the foul. I like Rembert. He's going to be a great one for Gene Bartow down at University of Alabama, Birmingham. A uh, very active player, you know. He was uh, picked a uh, Mr. Basketball, I think, in Alabama. There he is, locking inside, posts up strong in a box, takes it up, seals off the defensive oh, player, draws the contact. Here's, I, the, here's the odd thing about this game. Uh, here's Rembert playing for the East team and his old coach, Joe Evans, from Orville, coaching the West. Yeah, Rem Evans coaching the West team. He doesn't want him. Do you think he's rooting for him to deliver this right now? He's got to work on that free throw stroke, I believe. Well, his Nick. high school team got beat by Lafayette High School for the uh, state 4A championship, and they were having a great year. They finished, I believe, 33 and two. That's high right. School. They were, uh, the Bears, and Rembert had 35 points against Fort Walton Beach, so he had some big games. 52 to 48. The West on the break. Good pass by Henderson to Randall, and he draws the fouls. He gets off the shot. That'll be on Rembert. But well, Rembert's an active. No, that's going to be Jones. Ricky Jones gets the foul. Ricky Jones has been really quiet. There have been a lot of adjectives describing him, and some people have talked about him as a young version of a Michael Jordan, and he's going down to Clemson. I think that people can make a mistake of evaluating kids in an all-star confrontation as opposed to watching them in a team concept all year in their you know, individual, in their respective programs. Well, and the team concept, uh, you want role players. You want team players like Pete Chilka. He's going to look that much better once he gets into a team concert. Well, he'll fit in real well down in North Carolina. I look for North Carolina's young kids like Madden and Bucknall finally to give them the kind of contributions that a lot of people are anticipating. Will this guy replace Matt Calvin, you think, next year? I mean, uh, Calvin Thompson? Well, you know, Thompson leaves, and so does Kellogg across that front. But they've also got a kid by the name of Keith Harris from out of Santa Monica, an excellent player. Oh, look at that nice Randall, inside good pass. good touch. Nice touch inside by Mark Randall. Randall's going to play. I really believe he's going to be tough to sit down on the bench. And they're in a hunt for a kid by the name of Stacy Augman. A lot California. of people tell me Stacy from out of Pasadena, California, is a big-time, big-time player. 55-48, West back to a seven-point lead. 9.35 to go in the third period. Playing 12 and quarters. Chapman down the middle with a great touch off the move. Well, Chapman can do it all. An excellent front change by Chapman. He's going to learn to play on the defensive end, Jim, but he's playing for one of the masters defensively in Eddie Sutton, and he'll get him to play defense. Yeah, no question about that. Williams successful knocking the ball out of bounds. That's all. The East is going to get it. The East now can cut the margin to three. 
Regal Rex Chapman, they call him down in Owensboro. That's produced a lot of great players all the way back to Cliff Hagen's time. Here's Chapman, a bullet pass along the line. Fury knocks it away. He's got the great smile. He just looks like the All-American kid. 35 against uh, Ballard High School in Louisville. And remember the great years Ballard had, don't you, with Lamp and Raker and that crew? You Jerry got all, Eves. You got all those names, and they played for uh, Richard Schmidt down there, I believe, at yep. Ballard. Now is the coach of the University of Tampa. Well, he followed them on to Virginia, remember? Eves, of course, went to Louisville right. and stayed home. 55-50, five-point lead. Oliver is going to shoot here. It's going to be an inbounds play, I believe. West, West has a little bit more size, and that's been the differential. They're hoping that they can break this game open. The East is hoping to stay within seven, eight points going into the last quarter to have a shot. Brian Oliver led the state of Georgia in scoring this year, 29.8. And strangely, these great players, they, only two of them led their particular state in scoring. Oliver? And Ricky Jones. There's another great player down in the state of Georgia, but I remember Derek Miller, big guard from out of Savannah, Georgia, the same city that produced Purvis Ellison. And rumors have maybe Kentucky or maybe Auburn with Sonny Smith, who turned down mega bucks at Western Kentucky to remain with Auburn. Oh, well, look at that move by Abdel Nebi. And another pass knocked away inside by Rembert. You got to be careful getting uh, careless with the ball with Rembert around. He's like a bouncing ball. 55-52. Next year, that three-point play is going to be really exciting for many teams. I know Steve Alford, Reggie Miller, and guys like that are really going to be smiling, noting three-point play is going to be part of college basketball. Yeah, Del Curry is saying, why? Why oh, so yeah. long? Abdul Levy rips it off. I like this kid. Yeah, it's going to be a good one for the Blue Devils of uh, Mike Krzyzewski down in Durham. Now the East can get back within one, and Chapman will try. Not quite. Loose ball. Picked up by Phil Henderson. Headed for Duke also. Henderson, the excellent passer. Bright takes it right to the hole. And Jones has got the rebound here for the East. Again, the East can cut it to a point. 8.20 to go in the third period. We don't see much ball movement and player movement in games like this. Everything becomes one-on-one. -on -one. Chapman having a tough time shooting the jump shot. And he is a dynamite perimeter shooter. Now, he's going to be a three-point star. Randall, oh, look at Randall. Randall. Uh, Randall has really shown well in this game. That's his eighth point. He played well last week also in the All-American game out in Washington, D.C. The thing I like about Randall, well, we know he can run the court, but he has great court savvy. He's a very heady player on the floor, multi-dimensional. Well, he's very smart. 3.3 student. Here's a three-on-one break. Henderson in the middle. Oh, nice on selfish right. Oh. Rebound out the limit. They missed a great chance. The West did there. Here's the lob to Rembert, and he can't hold it. Boy, Henderson or rather Chapman had a great idea. He knew Rembert was down there, and if you get it close, Rembert usually makes it pay off. 7.38 to go in the third period. Timeout. West still leads it by five. We'll be back. ESPN brings you live exclusive coverage of the most honored annual road race. It's the 90th anniversary of the Boston Marathon, Monday, April 21st, and for the first time since the marathon's inception back in 1897. Prize money totaling a quarter of a million dollars will be at stake. So join ESPN for three and a half hours of exclusive live coverage. The 1986 Boston Marathon. Fourth quarter, J.R. Reed is in for the East. Romeo Robinson in point guard. That's a great combination. Let's see if they can come behind. Also in there is Pete Chilcutt. Robinson's the other forward, and Chapman's an under to Chilcutt. Feeds it to Robinson. Oh, Romeo Robinson, great move. Well, Robinson scores, but what a tremendous pass by Chilcutt. He just drilled that bounce pass on the interior. An excellent pass because it really avoids the deflection. Now here comes Bry for the West trying to take over himself, and he's fouled by Romeo Robinson. That's four fouls on Romeo Robinson, but remember, you get six in this game. Five doesn't send you out. They're going to save Robinson, apparently. As Stu Better calls him to the sidelines and back in comes Brian Oliver. Bryant at the line, Dwayne Bryant. You know, Bryant goes to the line, and as I told you earlier, he said that Isaiah Thomas is his idol. All these guys, the young guards, really like Isaiah, and you don't blame him. Isaiah now, to me, is the best point guard in all of basketball because I don't classify Magic Johnson as a point guard. To me, Magic's just a flat-out, all-around, versatile performer. Dick, this kid had 26, re uh, 26 assists in one game this year. They tell me Dale. They tell me it was great watching him hook up against Fess Irvin in a high school game, watching these two dandies go head-to-head. -head. Oh, J.R. Reed claims the rebound. 
Uh, he's just a space eater, big JR. Well, this game's wide open for MVP, too. Coleman's got to be in there. you got to think about Reed, depending on what he does. There's Reed active. Oh, score in a basket. And they're going to give a goal to Neon Mills. JR says, thank you, Mr. Mills. I love the deuce you just gave me. 15 points for Reed, who played only briefly in the third period. And the East now has cut it to nine. There's Mills. Mills has got an air of confidence about him. There's the good head fake, the little jump hook, and Mills, that's a poor place to try and block the shot. If you're head on with the basket, nine out of 10 times, they're gonna call that goaltender. 76-67, West being challenged here now. Here comes uh, Curie, and there goes Mills driving across, and rebound, Chilcutt battling on the floor. And Reed comes up with it. Here comes Reed. Three Three the got Chapman on his right. Reed's going to take it inside for the layup. And twice he's missed that shot. And now they got it open with Mills. What's the jam? A reverse slam by Terry Mills for the Romulus, Michigan. Well, you got a missed layup at one end by J.R. Reed and a slam dunk by Terry Mills at the other. Dick, we talked about that peril. You know, both of those guys are going to have a great shot for our Olympic team. Hood on the outside. They'll complete their sophomore year in 19, I guess, 87, There's 88 a... season. And they'll be eligible definitely for our Olympic team. Keeping up the game here, Dick. Here's a violation by the, the team. Now they're still going to give it to the West. Full court pressure. Shenses back in there for the West. Oh, Shenses comes up as a release man. Oh, good Fury. Little... Oh, he got away with a little walk. Yeah, he walked right there. A little NBA shuffle on the floor. Jensen's is staying in that picture, too. He's got 12 points. Chapman at the other end gets his own rebound. Chapman takes it in strong. Tipped up once by Chilcutt and then lost out of bounds. We haven't seen really a good shooting night, Jim. We nope. haven't seen guys get the shots in what we call good offensive maneuvers. You know, when you know your offensive sets and you come off them, you have better timing and better rhythm to your shot. Good play by Scott Williams. Breaks up that entry pass intended for J.R. Reed. Here comes Ron Hurey down. Taken away by Reed in the air. What an athletic move. Can you believe that defensive play? Here comes oh, Hood driving hard. Steve Hood scores. And the East has cut it again to nine. Back to Shinsis it comes for an easy one. I'll tell you what, Shinsis, you put a body and really work on this guy. Get him in a Nautilus. Get him to get really strong physically. What a major factor he's going to be in the Southeastern Conference. Well, J.R. Reed wants to take charge of this game here, Dick. You can see it working inside. Scott Williams. He's in a wheel to the teammate. baseline. Yeah, they are going head to head. Now there goes uh, oh, Oliver yeah. down the middle. And Hood can hold it. Back the other way, Dwayne Bryant. Oh, nice bounce Great pass. Great pass to feed the Shenses, and Shenses has it knocked away and out of bounds. Boy, Reed tried to take a charge there. There were two Goliaths colliding. What's that? Shinsis really can run the floor. He really gets up and down the court. There's a little flip back to Shinsis. Brandon High School. He says, where's the foul? I got butchered. Out of bounds play coming up from the West. Which leads 82 to 71. Been a lot of great players here named the MVP over the years. And we'll try to keep you posted on that as we go along. That will receive the John Wooden Award, of course. The most exciting player in all of basketball today who played in this game, Michael Jordan, the best player of all time, didn't play in this game, Larry Bird. Yep. Came before Bird's time. Yeah, it came before the time of the human. Yep. Chances to the inside, and he's fouled by J.R. Reed. You know, I got to kick somebody who was talking about Ron Urey had three triple doubles, and I said today, well, he had tri three triple doubles what about the human triple double mr oscar robertson i mean he was like automatic for an entire season to big o chances will go to the line they call him the big d down around brandon florida because he's, he's a great shot blocker he's going to develop a little better work ethic and have a little bit more desire but he's matured a little he even told me he says coach i was a little immature during the season and the coach had, I guess, suspend him for a few games, but he said it was my fault, not the coach's fault. And I think maybe sometimes a kid can learn from that. I'll tell you one thing. He's playing for a taskmaster in Norman Sloan, and Norman will get him to really do the things it takes to win. Norman's now standing disciplinary. 12-point lead for the West. Robinson outside for the East. Robinson shows some outside touch. He has now scored nine points in the second quarter. He says, hey, who said I can't shoot? I can stick the rock, but my driving ability overshadows 
goes. Oh, here he just threw it away. Chance for the East to get a little closer. Ten point lead for the West. 8.45 to go. Yuri didn't have a good first half. He was the MVP last week in the All American game out of Washington. I said, What did you get for that? He said, I got a handshake. They didn't even give me a trophy. They're not allowed to. Chapman's back in there. Pendleton comes back in for the West. He's going and out. So to, does Fess Irvin. You know, Yuri going out to Arkansas. Nolan Richardson certainly has got a good one taking him from. Oh, J.R. Reed speed. and Williams are almost into it. Here's a pick pass picked up by Fess Irvin. Lead pass down floor. And following is Yuri picked up by Abdelnetti. Long pass to Chapman. Oh, what a pass. To Rimbert. Rimbert inside for the layup. Chapman really has great vision. He saw. Rembert all the way and delivers the ball, and Rembert makes the catch and scores. 75 to 83. Here's Pendleton, great shooter. He's been had an off night. Follows from the touch, catch in the air. Reed kept it alive for Rumel Robinson. Here comes the East. They can no, get back amazing. and close. Robinson feeds underneath the Chapman for the little hook. Maybe hook by Chapman, and the East is back in the game. It's 83 77. How would you like to have that backcourt with Neil Robinson and Rex Chapman playing as a tandem? You know, we haven't seen, in all fairness, the penalty. He put a show on shooting here at practice, and he's just struggling. I really believe the pressure of playing at home might be, you know, affecting him right now, Jim. Timeout for the West. They lead the East by six. Watching the McDonald's All-America High School game here in Detroit. 83-77, we're in the fourth quarter. The West has led most of the way, just under eight minutes left of this game. Dick, these are 25 of the best in the nation. They used to be just 24. 1980, they named the 24, and there was another guy they had to get in there, and that's when they started at 25. So I'm going to give you a pop quiz in just a minute. Back the other way comes Fess Urban. See you stolen by Chapman. Chapman for the East. You got the thoroughbreds in there now. Oh, Chapman what a play. Him. What a pass over to Robinson now to J.R. Reed, and Reed is fouled on the play. Who was the player they had to have to make 25 in 1980? I'm not a trivia Sam guy, Jim. Perkins. Oh, and from Perkins. that time on, it's been 25 and not 24. I'll tell you, they have that that page they take, that picture with all the players on it. You could just allow me, just flip it to the other side and post dots, and I'll take any five of the 25. J.R. Reed, they say he's another Tisdale, but two inches taller with a 17-size shoe, and he's headed for Chapel Hill. And with the possible exception of James Worthy, he's the most physical-looking player Dean Smith's ever brought in there in the, in the middle. Yeah, I think it's going to be an outstanding tandem watching he and uh, Scott Williams hook up all of the Perkins and, and Worthy combo. But remember this, Perkins and Worthy had a little help from a fair player at the other position by the name of Mr. Jordan, who's all-world. You get the picture that I like Michael Jordan, don't you? 83, 79. The we could stay here all night and not name anybody who doesn't, I don't think, Dick. Oh, he's just such a talent and such, such a winner. He wants to play despite his injury out there in Chicago. Look at the press right now. Now they're only down by four now. He's making the move, being led by Chapman. J.R. Reed, Abdul Nabi is in there. Got to play man-to-man, -man, Jim. They can't use the zone press to play man-to-man. -man. There goes Thompson, and Reed keeps it alive, but Thompson pulls it down. Loose ball. Thompson's going to get it. The he's West a uh, leading by... 12 one moment ago, now by just four. Chapman knocks it away and out of bounds. Well, they're letting them play a little physical basketball in there. Well, Tom Rucker told me that tonight. He said, heck, we're going to allow a little bit of a walking violation. We're going to let them bang a little bit. Dicker Steve Hood coming in. I'll tell you what a clutch player is. He is playing for DeMath in, uh, in uh, Myrtle Beach. Score tied. No time left. He gets two free throws. Makes his first shot. Game's over, right? Wrong. They caught that. I'll tell you the rest of the story in a minute. Here goes Mitt. Hit the bank board. That gives the East a chance. Robinson bounce pass intended for Hood. Picked off by Pendleton. Thompson Coleman coming back on Chapman. Chapman takes it away. What a great what a defensive play, play by Chapman. Tremendous awareness on a court. Chapman off to Ricky Jones and rebound taken away by Scott Williams. He's fouled by J.R. Reed. I tell you, you never know Reed and Williams are both headed for the same college team. They're Let me get back my story though about Hood. He hits his free throw with no time left to break the tie. His teammates run out on the floor. They call a technical foul. He's got to shoot the other shot because if he misses that, the other team's got a great free thrower. And can you imagine the pressure? But he made it. He made it. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an odd story, I'll tell you that. You get all these, I'll tell you, Jim. 83, I can't stop you. Well, that game uh, straight for Morgan with Pendleton down the middle, out of control, and a blocking foul called on the East. Off the floor 
Four comes uh, Ricky Jones. You know, we mentioned Pendleton and his love for George Raveling as Chapman goes off the floor and gets a nice hand. George got news. He signed, got a verbal commitment, I believe, from Chris Monk. And if Monk weren't injured during the course of the season, he'd be playing in this game from out of Reardon High School in San Francisco. A big, strong inside player. Can another player be playing here if he were not injured? Michael Christian oh, yeah. from Denver. Going yeah. to Georgia Tech. Oh, everybody just rants and raves about uh, Christian. Pendleton. He's had a bad scoring game. That's only his second point. Of course, he was with uh, Glenn Rice and the Wildcats up at Northwest. I was talking earlier, and you know, he told me how confused he was because he really was looking forward to playing for George. And as we alluded to earlier about that rule, I just think so many kids are hurt, and I think some people got to really address that rule. And I think some people got to address the other. You know, we got the three-point play. The last four minutes of the game really has to be addressed. Something's got to be done. I agree with Digger Phelps. Something's got to be done about the last four minutes. It takes an eternity to finish a game. That's the hood with the basket down there. Pulls the East back within four, and the West almost turns turns it over. I like the international rule where you have a choice if you foul near the end of the game of taking the ball out of bounds and I think that would eliminate a lot of the you know intentional fouling. Chris Brooks going in for J.R. Reed. I think Reed's getting a little bit frustrated here. He's really battling against Scott Williams who's going to be his uh, future teammate at North Carolina. Here's Mills spinning and hitting. That's Terry Mills. That's vintage Terry Mills. Long arms, catches the ball, wheels and deals, spins and drills the J. Brunel Robinson, stutter step, off the mark. Off of there comes Coleman. Coleman says, I'll be magic. Oh, Let's nice pass. Oh, Terry Mills. Dipsy doo, dunkaroo. Slam jam bam by TM. Eight point lead by the West. Oh, the West with a Michigan connection. That was Coleman to Mills, and he turned this crowd on fire. You know, it's like a theater crowd up in Ann Arbor, but he'll get them out of those seats up in there. Amazing blue. Right, Steve Hood again. Remember we told you what a clutch shooter he was? He scored eight points here in the fourth quarter. Here goes Watch this. The one. Michigan connection. Derek Coleman from out of Detroit. Little flip to Terry Mills. Little reverse slam jam. And his coach, Al Wilkerson, jumps out of his seat. Time out for the East with five and a half minutes to go. West leads by six. Well, Dick, I tell you, you've already talked about these young guys who'll be coming along next year. Well, these are stars of tomorrow, rising seniors. You look at Marcus Liberty from out of Chicago, Chris Corciani from out of Miami, Dennis Scott, tremendous player down at Flint uh, Hill, uh, Brian Shorter from out of Simon Gratz, who Sonny Hill, who's from Philadelphia, the Sonny Hill League, rants and raves about him. And then Lloyd Daniels, we don't know what he's going to do. Some rumors have it that Lloyd may go right to college next year and sit out. And the two kids from Marion, Indiana, and Rodney Mur Monroe from out of you know, we've, we left some names off there. You can't put them all on there, but they're the names of next year. Well, we met two great players at Marion, Indiana. Don't forget them. 89-83. Six-point lead by the West. Pendleton spinning on the outside. No. Boy, he has had a tough, tough game in shooting. And the little guy got caught underneath commits the foul. Brian Oliver. Most valuable player will join a select group of players the past who won uh, won this award. Pearl Washington, Ephraim Winters, Adrian Branch, Russell Cross. All have been honored in the past along with Winston Bennett, John Williams, last year Walker, and I read a great story on Brian Oliver when I was in Atlanta at the airport in the Atlanta Constitution. It was all about his mother and father and how they drilled him early in the morning and worked with him and worked with him. And gave him some rules and had rules of discipline and he's turned out to be just such a super young man academically and athletically. Oh, Brian Oliver with a nice head fake on that follow and he draws the foul from Shensis. Fourth foul on Shensis will put Oliver at the line and he's a gutsy little guy. Bobby Kremens will love him at Georgia Tech. What a program Bobby Kremens has developed and put together. I've always said uh, this year on ESPN, the three great stories in basketball, Dave Gavitt selling the Big East, Gene Barto, and what he's done at that program at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and Bobby Kremens, what he's done at Georgia Tech. That program was left for practically dead when he took over. Well, this kid's got great court knowledge, number one player in Georgia, and I don't have to tell you who was number one last year, do I? He's a fair player, never Purvis. nervous, Purvis. That's right. National Championship, he nailed the wall of love. Back in comes Chapman, who's caught the heart of this crowd here, and they've, they've been roarous in their applause of Chapman and his plays. So let's see what he can do for the East. West leading by five. 
Under five minutes to go. Mills. Hit Shenses lobs the inside, trying to go to Randall that's knocked away. They went to a high-low situation. Thompson coming right with the left hand, and Steve Hill with a big rebound. He's got to work really on his shot during the summer, Jim. He's got to really put a lot of hours working on his shot, Stevie Thompson. There goes Oliver, and J.R. Reed's back in the lineup. They just got goaltending, giving Oliver the basket, and the East is making a determined bid to catch the West. They're back within three. Right here's where these games really get good, Dick. You can see the greatness coming out of these well, kids when they come down the line. They face the challenge. The special players want the ball down the stretch. Jensis cut off by Reed, intercepted by Rumel uh -oh, Robinson. He's going right him. to the goal. Yeah, get out of my way. way. Get out of my way. He's fouled. He can tie the score. You know what he looked like to me? He looked like Jim Brown running an off-tackle play for Syracuse University years ago. I mean, you watch him out here. Look at Ramil. He says, get out of my way. Look at him hang strong, tough to the goal. He goes with authority. Ramil Robinson cuts the lead down to 90, 89 to 88. Four minutes and 14 seconds to go in the ball game. And Robinson has just put his name on the list as possible MVP. And Billy Pack is writing all these notes down here on all these kids. I got to get all these adjectives that he's writing down for his descriptions next year on, on CBS. High score with 4-12 to go. 89-89, three-point play by Robinson. Now in the running here for the most valuable player in the Wooden Award. He's a winner. Robinson is a winner. Boy, at Michigan, he'll be something warning. There's Mills, foul from behind by Chapman. Chapman is not going to give him that easy one. Well, there's a lot of players right now, Jim. They shy from the ball. But you notice the great ones, the Mills and the Ramil Robinsons. Hey, Bill Friedel has got himself a dandy combination. And joining Glenn Rice, who I think has the talent to be a great one, and Grant and Joubert, Michigan's going to be talented again. But I pick Indiana to win the Big Ten next year. Now, that's interesting. Bobby Knight. Coming up some good players, and of course, got the great Steve Alford returning. Oh, he's an All-American choice for me preseason at the big guard slot. There's Mills, a kid who grew 10 inches in four years. From the eighth grade to a junior high school, he shot up 10 inches. I was teasing him today. I said, hey, I got to make out a top 20. Where do you want me to put Michigan? He says, put us about number 9 or 10 preseason. He said, but we won't finish 9 or 10. We're going to go up that ladder. All right, this game's up for grabs. Two-point lead by the West. Almost four minutes to go. Oliver. Oliver to the baseline. Tipped up by Chapman. And now Coleman comes down with it, and he's fouled by Oliver. Number two on Oliver, and we're down now to the one and one. They're over the 10 uh, foul limit. Both teams are, so we'll be bonus one and one for the final 345. And Coleman, who certainly has to be in the running here for the most valuable player of this game, he and about six others, is coming to the line. So I'll say it's going to be deciding this last three and a half minutes, Dick. Derek's got a world of talent, good power, strong player inside, but is not a consistently good shooter with range and not really what I would call a great free throw shooter. Looked good there, though. Yeah. Nice release on that one. Well, I'll tell you what he's done today. He's at six out of seven. Well, that's all not bad. Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. Good concentration, good about, follow through. Look good there. Eight. My scouting report on him on a free throw line. I'm going to have to wipe that one out because he looked good to me. Good rhythm, good touch, good release. 93-89. The West Stars leading in the McDonald's High School All-America game. Here goes Romeo Robinson. Takes it up there. Oh, look, look at his foul by Mill. What? Oh, Robinson. Oh, baby. I could see what I loved him up in Massachusetts. Dick, if I could quote you a moment here, Robinson says, don't give that trophy away yet. I'm still Ooh. in there. You know, it's amazing. He played for Michael Jarvis at Cambridge Ridge Latin, and Jarvis did a great job this year in his first year with Boston University. Yep. And a lot of people thought maybe he might join his coach, but uh, he wanted to go to the immediate, what they call, big-time arena, and Bill Frieda charmed him. Because Villanova was in the running for him also. Now the big three-point play by Robinson, his second here in the fourth quarter. 93 to 92. West leading it now by just one point, and Hood is back in there. Remember, he comes off the great DeMatha program in Hydesville, Maryland. Has been consistently in the top high school program in the country over the last two decades. Well, the East wanted to stay close going into the last quarter, and they got their shot. A lot of people thought it might have been a blowout by the time it got to the fourth quarter with the West having the bigger team. Now, Rumo Robinson just picked up his fifth personal foul. One more, and he goes out. So even though they're leaned in this game, there is a limit. 
I'd like to see the college game adopt the six foul situation or maybe don't have a guy foul out. I think so many times we've got the striped shirts dictating a player who fans pay big dollars to come to see and he ends up sitting next to the coach. And basketball is the only sport. I mean, in baseball and football, you don't see players going to the sideline and the referees dictating that they sit on the sideline. So I, I don't know, Jim, your feelings on it. I, I just seen so many times great players not able to play after a coach works all week designing their offense and defense around that talent. Well, Dick, the only reaction I would make to that is that I'm glad they put the three-point basket in, but we got a great game. I just hate to see him change it much more. Yeah, I, I agree to a certain degree. However, sometimes the changes can help. Why not? Oh, Reed is right there on the weak side. Nobody blocked him out. J.R. Reed puts home his 19th point, and it's 94-94 tied. 3.14 to go. You're not going to see too much blocking out in a game like this. You're seeing guys just jumping, trying to use their legs. Bill Henderson back in there for the West. Good shooter, good passer. That's the key for him. See, these kids right now got to feel a lot of pride because they know the coaches can put who they want on the floor. Mills. Does he want the ball at yep. money time? 18 points for Terry Mills, Mr. Smooth. Here comes uh, Hood, who has been a clutch player. He's now scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. Now we're tied again at 96 all. And you know, Morgan Woot's proud of that kid. Well, good strong drive by Hood. I really love Terry Mills. He's everything they say and more. Mills and J.R. Reed are not meteor all Americans. They are a real thing. I go I'm telling you something. It's showtime. He's a big timer. He's a prime time performer. Oh, Bill Frieder, you got yourself a dandy one. Game is on the line here. Mills is beginning to shine. And the East wants another timeout. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go. This one's not over yet. It's the East trailing by two. Watching the great stars of 1986, the McDonald's All-American. How about some of the stars of the past, the centers? Well, that is the chairman of the board, Patrick Ewing, the 1981 on financial championship at Georgetown. Ralph Sampson, 1979, now in Houston. Jeff Rubin, now playing with the Bullocks, Perkins, Allison, Washburn, and that's a pretty good, solid half dozen of men in the middle at number five, wouldn't you say? Nice crowd, second biggest crowd ever to watch the McDonald's All-America game. Over 15,000 here at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, right on the banks of the beautiful Detroit River in the hometown of Dick Vitale. Oh, it's a beautiful place. I tell you, Mayor Coleman Young could be proud of the Renaissance Center and the things they've established down here. But I'll tell you what, they were lucky to keep Terry Mills. Eddie Sutton must die every time he sees Mills perform because they came so close to Kentucky to getting Terry Mills. Bob Denabe inside to Reed. Reed oh, five. yes! J.R. Reed sends this game into another tie. That's his 20 best points, shot. 21 points for J.R. Reed. 98-98. Someone said, describe his best shot. They said the dunk, a vicious dunk. Mills jockeying inside now against Optal Nebby. Mills wants the ball. They got to find Terry. Here's Pendleton. Oh, boy, you've got to watch Robinson. He's a pickpocket. And Hood came very close on a good overplay picking that one off. Boy, you're looking at Hood, possibly Reed, Rumiel Robinson for the East, for the West. You're looking at Mills, maybe Shensis, maybe Coleman for the MVP. Oh. Here's a steal by Robinson. Rumiel Robinson, the East will lead. He's such an aggressive player. He's going to be very disruptive defensively, Jim, on the floor. Dick, he had two points the first half. In the second half, he's now scored while well, he scored a total of 19 points. So he's had 17 in the second half. He's had 12 in the fourth quarter. That's a pressure player. I like Mills' hands. He's got great hands. East leading, first time in a long spell. 100 to 98. 123 to go. Going down the wire again. Again, both teams are going to be in double, uh, triple figures as often is the case in this game. Nicky Anderson in strong, ties the score. Simeon. Great Chicago. player from out of Chicago. They say he's a tough player around the basket. Some people have talked about him in the class of Adrian Dantley. As all the tools, going to be great at Illinois. There goes Abdel Nebi down the middle. Scored a basket. Oh, they missed that oh, one. Yep. A great block, they call it. No goaltending. Well, that was goaltending. Nick Anderson back for the West. And in strong goes Coleman, fouled by Abdel Nebi. Abdel Nebi now is protesting that he didn't get the call on goaltending. Uh, let's see what do you think. 
What do you think, Dick? Oh, yeah, I definitely no think it's goaltending. I definitely think that ball is yep. down. Abdul Nabi a little bit hot under the collar, went to the other end, committed the foul, and he'll put Coleman on the line. I feel better about my call on that play. Billy Packer nodded his head. He says, yeah. <laughs> 15 rebounds, 18 points for Coleman. He had a big night, didn't he? Six Woo. out of seven at the line. Yeah, he looks good on a free throw. That time he didn't. Uh -huh. See, that yep. time he showed his little inconsistency. Gets two. Score tied, 100 apiece. This guy's probably going to be best facing the basket, wouldn't you think, when Jim he goes up to Syracuse? Jimmy Beheim's here. He had Dave Bing with him, who's a great example of Syracuse University, being so successful as an entrepreneur now and a businessman and helps out Syracuse a great deal, and they're really excited about Derek Coleman. Now the East down by one point, full court pressure. It's got to be man to man. Cannot play zone defense in this game. Two they kids, the big guy, Abdul Levy, to get it in. Two kids that are much better than what we saw here tonight: Scott Williams and Anthony Pendleton. Forty-two seconds to go. Williams is really banging with yeah. Jr. Reed inside. Williams foul. That battle has been going on for a while inside yeah. between Reed and Williams. They and are. finally went, went past the point of no return. Watch them inside. They're going to be teammates next year in North Carolina. Look at Dean. Look at your duo. Look at your two guys, Williams and Reed. Woo! They hook it up inside. Well, Reed's going to be on the line for the one and one. And Stu Better going to set out his big guy. The West asked for a timeout. Put the pressure on him. Talk to see how it ends. Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight on ESPN. Montreal versus Boston, 8 o'clock tonight live right here on ESPN. So hope you'll join us for that exciting Stanley Cup. That's going to be a lot of excitement coming up. There's the score, 101. West leads by point. J.R. Reed on the line, 1-1. One and one. Hey, Jim, we can't go overtime, can we? I'm going out for dinner. I'm starving. Well, you can wait. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, I would love to have a chance to coach somebody <laughs> like J.R. Reed. Gets a bonus shot. Most outstanding player twice at Garf's five-star camp. Yeah, Just you know, Howard can't say enough about J.R. Reed. But, you know, when you, you think about number one in a country, it's so difficult to classify one guy better than the next. Mills, to me, is probably the best finesse player in the country. And J.R. Reed, here, the best power player. Game's on the line, 25 seconds to go. West got the ball, they're trailing by a point. You got to go to Mills. I got to go to Mills. I got to let my big horse, the great player, He's got to want it. You got to go to Mills. You got to find him inside. Bob's going to be on him. He's not a great defensive whiz, but he's the man that got him. They got J.R. Reed on. Look at Mills Williams. wants the ball. Steal by Chapman almost. Bryant gets it back for the West. Bryant through. Good block on the inside. And here is Hood being fouled in the backcourt. And Dick, I got to go back to my story from Myrtle Beach. When Hood was on the line, no time left. High score. And he's up there for two shots, makes one, gets a technical foul, and has to make the second one after he thought the game was over. And we're going to see him on the spot Look again. at Mills trying to get the ball here. He wants it, number 52. He's got post position. They don't get him the ball. Look, he says, please get it to me. They don't find him. Well, we come back with only four seconds to go. Steve Hood, who has an excellent chance of being named most valuable player of this game because he scored 10 of his 14 points in the fourth quarter. Will be at the free throw line and a couple of free throws will put it out of reach. Well, Hood has had a great fourth quarter. Ramil Robinson's had a tremendous yeah. fourth and quarter. Terry Mills well. and, and JR's played well. So the MVP, you've got a number of choices right now. I'll let you select that since you've done an outstanding job. No. I'm naming you MVP. No, no. Jim, I wish these people could see all your notes and all the work you have done in research for this game. It's well, amazing. Well, I can't keep these things in my head like you do, Dick. I'll tell you what, I don't know where you get all those facts. To. I'm sitting here just mind-boggling, looking at every little thing and every player in America. 102 to 101. Well, I just well, we've seen some exciting action here. There's uh, Steve Hood coming out, clutch shooter for Morgan Wooten up at the uh, DeMatha Academy in Hyattsville, uh, Maryland. He played at DeMatha with a great sophomore. What do you remember? You're going to hear the name a lot of Mustaf, 6'9", Gerard. There's another great South down at uh, Whitehaven, the same school that produced Stevie Mitchell, where Ron Urey's from. He kept on him as Smith, an outstanding South. Of course, uh, Whitehaven had their great team uh, a couple of years back when they had Alexander and Douglas in there with Urey and only lost to Dunbar, I think. And Mitchell is uh, from that school, the UAB, super, UAB superstar. As we look at Hood going to the line now, he can ice this right here. Yeah, the, the pressure's on. Remember Myrtle Beach story? Well, here we go. See if Hood can win. 
for his team. Boy, is he smooth. That's a two-point lead. If he hits this one, there's no three-point basket in this game. You got to say it's over. Four seconds to well, go. Well, it's the biggest lock since Yale. If he hits this one. <laughs> He's got this one right now. Drill this one. Well, this would be what he did at Myrtle Beach to win that big game. And it's there it is. The it's East all. is going to win. And a little bit of an upset. They thought the West would take it. It's thrown out of bounds. So the East is going to get back to basketball. Dick, I think Ox, actually you were the target there. And they missed. They tried to find me right now. I think they really wanted to hit Packer. <laughs> they really did. They were throwing it at Billy Packer, not at me. Three-point lead. Here's the pass outside to uh, J.R. Reed. And Reed will take a jump shot up the gun. And it's all over. The East has won it 104 to 101 after the West had led at the end of the first three quarters of play. Back for a final word in a moment. The East is the winner, 104-101. Well, that was another exciting finish for McDonald's High School All-American game. The East coming from behind in the fourth quarter to win 104 to 101. And our hats off to all those fine young men that played in this game. And especially to J.R. Reed, who's been named the most valuable player to win the Wooden Award. J.R., this is getting to be a habit. But you had a battle going in there with one of your future teammates, Scott Williams. What's going on there? Oh, we're just two physical types of players, and he's a really great player. And I'm lucky I'm getting to play with him for four years. Now you go to North Carolina after breaking all the hearts of guys like Terry Holland and Lefty Drizzell. What are you anticipating most about going to college? It was really tough for me to narrow down schools, but I figured North Carolina had the most to offer me. And um, I'm looking forward to going to Carolina and playing on Coach Smith for four years. Any goals in your mind right now? I'm just looking to improve and to try to make the adjustment from a um, social aspect and basketball and academic and just looking forward to playing. This guy proves much more, Dick. I think you can forget it for the next four years. A final score again. The East, 104. And the West, 101 from Detroit's Joe Louis Arena. The 1986 McDonald's All-America Game has been brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And now this is Jim Thacker for Dick Vitale saying so long from the Joe Louis Arena. We hope you've enjoyed the game. Congratulations again to the East. The winners by three. So long from Detroit. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right, have a good time, cause it's all right, everybody knows that it's all right, whoa, it's all right.